Hey everybody, in this video we're going to continue the configuration of our new AWS account. In the last video, what we did was we created a root account user. We created a new account in AWS with a root account user. That root account user will not be used for anything but emergencies really. And that user has been given MFA, and then we created a IAM user in also that we're going to use for the initial configuration. Now eventually what we're going to do is we're going to create a SSO or identity access, I think it's called now. We can look at this. Let's let's go in. Let's log into the account. So it's going to request an MFA code, which I have in my Google Authenticator. I'm going to type that in. Okay, so now we're in this account. And so far we, that's all we have is one account. Um, let's look at SSO, which is now called I am Identity Center. So this is something that we're going to set up, but not in this video, but I just want to show you. This was former, formerly AWS single sign-on, and this allows us to manage it through a directory, through Okta, or through Azure AD, or anything like that. We're gonna use Azure AD in this series, but you could use any of the um, identity identity providers, ping, there's quite, quite a few. And, okay. So in this video, what we want to do, though, is we want to set up AWS Control Tower. So let's go to Control. Control Tower. There's Control Tower. So you can see Control Tower here. So AWS Control Tower is to set up and govern multi-account AWS environment, right? So right now we don't have a multi-account setup, but we're going to. That's what, that's what we're going to configure here in this, coming up in these videos. But this is the first step. So we're going to set up a landing zone. And this will help us meet the well-architected framework design of a of a multi-account organization, which is is almost, which is very very common out in the in the real world. All right. So right now it says your existing service limits are not sufficient for AWS Control Tower to launch. Let's see why that is. That's interesting. So let's check that out. Let's look at our limits under service quotas. And we should be able to find something here. Why can't it? Why can't we create that? AWS services. Let's look for control tower. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at why that's not working. Let's find out. Okay, so here's let's look at the solution here. How to solve service limit service limit not sufficient error when launching control tower. Okay, so to solve this, launch a free tier EC2 instance in the region where your control tower will be launched. So this is just some odd thing. I know this fix is weird. Yeah, that's interesting. Let's try this out. So let's go to EC2. I didn't open it in a different 
let's go to launch an instance. So we'll go through the launch an instance. Now this is going to be pretty quick because we're not, this isn't the point of this video. So test, test one, we'll call it. We're going to keep it on Amazon Linux T2 micro, which is free tier eligible. Uh, we will, we really don't care. We're not going to create a key pair here, but this is for login so that you can have a public private key to a private key to log in to these servers. Network settings, we will keep this all the same and allow traffic. We're going to only allow it from my IP. And that should be it. We'll just launch this instance. And we will We're going to proceed without a key pair. Now you can do that. You can proceed without a key pair. Let's launch instance. There it's creating the instance. You can use AWS. You can use SSM systems manager to connect to the instance as long as it has the correct role assigned to it. The EC2 instance would have to have the role that allows it to connect to the SSM servers and that's so we're going to let this run for about 20 minutes and then we will continue the recording okay it's been 20 minutes so what we're going to do is here we're going to delete this so let's terminate the instance we do not need this at all so we're terminating terminating it and then let's go back to control tower and what we can do here is we can right click open link in new tab and go over there so then we have a new tab with our control tower let's set up the landing zone okay so you can see now it's working so that that fix did work so that was really good all right so the pricing for this, no additional charge. There are some usage charges, of course. We're going to set up our home region right here, U.S. East, Northern Virginia. We can deny services based on region. We're going to leave that at not enabled. And that should be pretty good. So let's click next. So this will configure the organizational units. So they're going to create an OU structure here. So this is based on AWS's best practices. They'll create a foundation OU named security and an additional OU named sandbox. What's next? All right, so we're now going to configure these shared accounts. You can see there's my org account. So it's going to say create new account. So this is going to be logs. So I'm going to put in the information. Remember, we're going to use the plus addressing that Gmail allows. Also, Microsoft 365 allows it too. So we'll call this logs at gmail.com. And for our audit account, audit at gmail.com. So there we go. And click next. All right, so that's in use. So let's, uh, so we'll call this our org audit. That should be fine.
And here we go, cloud trail configuration. So this will allow us to aggregate all the information into or an organizational trail and it delivers the log information to a specified AWS bucket. So this is good. This organizes all the cloud trail, all the changes that are made in the all the other accounts. We'll go into this one cloud trail and for monitoring it makes it easier. Log configuration for Amazon S3. This is optional. What we'll do is bucket retention for logging. We're going to cut this down to, we're just only going to do five days. We're just going to keep this low just because this is a test account. Um, if this was a real account, we would likely, we would likely keep this a lot higher. But this is just a test account, so I'll just do it for a low amount, and that will limit the amount of cost there is. Uh, KMS encryption. So we'll enable and customize encryption settings. Why don't we try that? Create a KMS key, and it's going to open up a con the KMS console. And we will create a key here and generate that display name for key. And we'll call this control tower. Next. And key administrators. And in here, you could define key administrators and key usage so you can separate the the key administration from the key usage so that's a nice nice feature in kms and we can get it we'll get into that in another video later but that's that's just something to keep in mind so we'll allow everybody to use this key and here is the key policy and finish Okay, so that is done. We'll go back here and we'll be able to now use that key. Okay, so review pricing and select regions. So we're just using US East right now. We don't have any additional regions we're not using. We could add some more if we want to. Uh, organizational units, they're defined. Foundational OU, name security. Additional OU, name sandbox. And it's going to configure shared accounts. Chris.Ranky at org account at gmail.com and the log archive for keeping all the logs. And there we configured our log configuration for S3, KMS encryption, and that is all we're going to do and we're going to set up our landing zone now i think this takes a while we'll see it, it will tell us and so let's see here we go so it's going to take 60 minutes so we're going to end this video and we'll come back in our next video once this is set up and we'll go through the landing zone and what it's done as far as preventive controls to enforce policies, detective controls to detect configuration violations. We'll look at the, the guardrails that are put in through AWS Control Tower and why you'd want to do this. All right, so thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and thank you.